All right. Hello, everyone, and welcome to our April 2023 Algolia Live coding session. Thank you so much for joining us today. Um, I'm really excited to be here. Our topic for today is expanding search beyond documentation. And we're joined today by our friends over at PostHog. Um, for those who don't know me, my name is Chuck Meyer. I'm a senior developer advocate here at Algolia. And I'm joined today by Paul Holtgren. Uh, Paul is a developer advocate and also a full stack engineer at PostHog. So Paul isn't just talking about what other people did today. He's going to be telling you a little bit about his own lived experience, which is always very exciting. Um, if you don't know about Algolia, we provide a set of uh, hosted APIs that allow developers to quickly build search and discovery experiences for your web and mobile applications. And so that's a little of what we're going to be talking about today. And Paul, do you want to tell us a little bit about PostHog? Sure. Yeah. So, hi everyone. I'm I'm Paul. Really, really excited to be here. Um, I work at a company called PostHog, which is sort of best known for kind of product analytics. Um, but we've recently kind of expanded to doing all sorts of product focused things, such as feature flagging, session recording. Um, so, really, we kind of call ourselves the product operating system. <laughs> Um, the other sort of hallmark is we're open source, fully remote. So um, I've been working here for about nine months, love the company, and um, I'm super excited to be kind of chatting about this. I work on the website and docs team. So we focus on sort of our website, our community, our documentation, um, and I've done a lot of stuff with that side of things. So a little bit of a mix of writing as far as um, writing documentation and um, creating community features. So yeah, that's a little bit about me and and uh, what PostHog does. Awesome, awesome, cool. And I understand we were having a little bit of a, a challenge with the chat earlier. So if if you do want to engage with us, we do encourage, we want this to be an interactive um, live coding session. Um, you'll want to, in the chat, make sure that you've selected everyone from the dropdown. And then um, just, just to test it for us, if someone wants to just tell us what's your favorite fruit, where are you from, um, just drop something in the chat just so that we know it's working for everybody. That would, that would help us out. And if you do have a question for us, mangoes, oh my gosh, I would love some mangoes right now, especially like, I like cold mangoes, right? When they're like kind of frozen and they just, oh, they taste so good. So excellent. Thank you. Thank you, Shabon. And uh, yeah, and so please do engage in the chat. If you have a particular question, sometimes it's easier for us to see it in the Q&A section. So there's a Q&A section as well. Feel free to drop questions in there and we'll try and pick them up as we go. And we'll leave some time at the end for questions as well. Um, now, as we kind of get into this, uh, Paul, the reason that you and I kind of started uh, chatting was I was really caught by the fact that um, PostHog started out as a doc search customer. And for those that don't know, um, doc search is not really customer because doc search is actually a free service that Algolia provides for open source projects. And it's a, essentially it's a packaged version of Algolia uh, designed specifically for indexing your documentation and then giving you some widgets to sort of add search into your docs. And it's a little different than Algolia proper. And I thought it was really cool to hear that you started out with Doc Search at PostHog, um, solved kind of the value of Algolia and sort of evolved from there. And that's really what I wanted to dig into today. Absolutely. Yeah. I, I And and it, it might be good in a second, I'll, I'll share my screen and kind of dig a little bit more into like where we <clears throat> where we started with Doc Search and everything. But um, uh, yeah, so the reason we sort of got connected was was through this um, uh, this PR that I put out where we totally revamped our search and basically moved from just kind of sticking in doc search and having that, I, I believe like we'd added it a long time ago, just as sort of a, a stopgap of like, why not add this in? It's quick, it's easy. But as things grew, the search experience in general, we got a lot of complaints about um, and it sort of didn't scale super well. Um, and so actually now is probably a good time maybe to, to jump into I have an old here. I'm going to share my screen real quick. Yeah, let's get off the slides. <laughs> yep, um, and this will go away in just a second. But I have an old uh, preview of what our website looked like. So this is our homepage, um, and this is what things were like before we had our kind of fully custom search. So we were just using Doc Search, um, and 
as you can see, there's a little bit of funky UX here, but let, let's say I search for something. Um, I'm looking for like how to identify a user and I get this sort of default Algolia doc search box, um, which is great because it's nice and easy, but already you can kind of see it's really challenging sort of parsing these results. It's not clear the hierarchy of things. There's kind of a lot of like, you know, results here that it's not clear where they're coming from. And so really overall, the, the main feedback we got was like, it was hard to sort of figure out and parse these results. You know, it, it, it was it was easy to get them, but then as an end user, it wasn't easy to actually find what you were looking for. Um, and additionally, this is also only searching docs pages. So we have kind of a whole, excuse me, we have a whole other set of content um, as far as like our blog. Um, another really cool thing we have is our um, handbook, which is sort of like a public uh, repository of ways that we like run our company. So sort of open source in and out. And this stuff was just completely gone from, from, from the search. It was really only documentation articles. So that was really kind of the impetus behind us wanting to switch um, to something a little bit more custom. Cool. Yeah, it's it's kind of that that two edge thing of um, doc search is really easy to set up. You can throw a couple lines of code in, um, and it's opinionated, which is great if yep. you don't have an opinion yourself. <laughs> but as soon as you start having an opinion, then it, it starts to be sort of like, okay, well, how do I take it and flex it, and and when do I let go and and start building something else? And it sounds like you kind of yeah. got to that point. Yeah, and 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 another thing, I think it's great for like you know, if you have like a, a React library or something, something where it's just kind of like, I don't know, you have less than 100 pages. Mm -hmm. I think it works really well for that. For us, like we have over kind of a thousand pages. And so it was really like a scale thing too mm -hmm. um, that it came down to. Like we were just kind of outgrowing it is what it felt like. Not that it hadn't served its purpose, but we had more outgrown it. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, and then uh, just to give kind of an idea of where we then went to, maybe I'll demo what the search looks like now, kind of some of the things we did and some of the things I'm going to try and build a simple version of today. Um, now on the website, we have this custom search interface here where we've obviously updated the styling one um, and, and done some custom styling. But additionally, we've um, sort of broken things down by the different types of content we have on the website. So we have documentation, we have our apps, which are sort of mm -hmm. like plugins, blog posts, tutorials, you know, API endpoints, we, you know, uh, community questions. And we've broken things down where now it's much easier to first of all, see kind of what type of result something is. So here's tutorials, here's docs, as well as breaking down, for example, only searching through questions um, so these are all kind of community questions or only searching through docs. So this is one of the main things I kind of want to talk about today around how do you deal with multiple types of articles, not just documentation pages, um, as well as kind of building some of this UI UX. This is um, done with like hooks as well as um, headless UI. Uh -huh. um, which is one of my favorite libraries. So yeah. this is kind of the the gist of what we'll be building today. Yeah. Um, but cool. yeah. Yeah. The, so in the technical term we tend to use for that sort of multi-source search is, is federated search. So, mm -hmm. you know, that, that that's kind of what we're dealing with today. And I'll say that this story resonated for me because this was actually a story I lived too. Before I worked for Algolia, I was working for an insure tech startup. And similarly, like we we're using doc search for our docs. I wanted to use it for other things. And there's kind of this, um, there's this bit of a canyon or a gap in the Algolia uh, space because doc search comes with a crawler. It's, it's very front end focused. Yep. Yep. And then to get those other sources, you kind of come into the real world of Algolia where it's API driven and sort of more build yep. processes. Yeah. And, and actually that's probably a good sort of segue into like the, the first step obviously was like, okay, now that we're not using doc search, we actually have to figure out how to get all this content into Algolia, mm. um, which was sort of the first thing that I kind of tackled. Um, and so to, to, to show a little bit of that, um, our website's built using Gatsby. Mm. And for all the frustrations of Gatsby, 
there is one thing that it does really well, and that's it does expose this great sort of GraphQL API where you can kind of query all this content. Um, so for doing something like this, it's actually perfect. Um, and so to sort of get a little bit of an idea, I built this um, this little, well, I didn't build it, I should say. I, I've used them, uh, I've used Tailwind UI to take this kind of sample app here, the sample documentation mm -hmm. um, sort of app. So it's got a number of pages, they're all markdown pages um, and it'll take a second to build, but they're all markdown pages and it's built using Gatsby. And so the first thing I sort of did was I actually looked around and Algolia has this plugin. Um, let's see, it's Gatsby Algolia. Um, there's this plugin that Gatsby has um, mm -hmm. or Algolia has that ships off your pages straight to Algolia. And so I found this and I was like, oh, this is perfect. This is exactly what we need. Um, and I ended up using it and no issues. I know it says it's in beta, but for me, there were no issues. So to get a little bit of an idea and actually jump into some code now, um, mm -hmm. all that this really sort of consisted of was, you know, importing this plugin and then, um, and I guess for those that aren't familiar with Gatsby, um, it has this, sort of GraphQL API, excuse my typing right now. It has this GraphQL API where you can basically query all of your content. And so um, in our Gatsby config, which is where we have kind of all of our plugins, we're basically running this query, which what it does is, oops, sorry, didn't copy for some reason. Um, Oh, anyway, okay. For whatever reason, copy is not working, so we'll just write this. <laughs> but um, what it basically does is it gives you a kind of programmatic way of interacting with your content. So these are all of our pages right here, and this is like our title. So we have um, sort of our quick start page, our you know SDKs page, and whatnot. Um, and we can grab a bunch of other information. For example, we can grab like the slug of each page. Um, and basically the idea is at the end of every build, we go through and we grab all of our markdown pages. So we grab all this information from here. We grab like the table of contents, which is all the kind of markdown headings. We grab um, the body, which is like the raw text. And basically we ship this off to Algolia. Um, and the gist of it, 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 this plugin makes it really simple. All you sort of do is write a query and then there's some other kind of like filtering that I'm doing, some processing, you know, like flattening the table of contents and, right. and stuff like that. But then um, we have this Gatsby plugin Algolia. We pass in a couple of other things. And if we run our build real quick, should go through and take a second. And so at the end of the build, Fingers crossed here that everything works. Okay, cool. So you'll see here, index to Algolia. So right at the end of the build. Um, and so I've set up just like a kind of basic index in Algolia. It's it's really easy to do. So I just have this kind of demo app here. Um, and if we refresh, you'll see now magically, we have kind of all of our records here with all of our fields and stuff. Um, and so for me, this was like, once I got to this point, I was like, okay, this, this feels like a sort of a good path to go down. Like I was, I was unsure of how difficult it would be getting things into Algolia, but, um, this plugin made it super easy. So once it was in Algolia, the kind of next thing that I messed around with, and this is something that I'll, I'll be totally honest, I, you know, Chuck, you probably have more experience and I kind <laughs> of just played around with the settings and stuff. But I messed around with like, okay, how do we make this searchable now? And like what sort of attributes and ranking and all this stuff. Um, so basically what I ended up doing was these are the sort of attributes that were allowing to be searchable. So like the title of the page, the all the kind of headings, the table of contents headings, the body, the slug. Um, and for me, that worked great. 
Got it. One, uh, thing, I'm, one thing I'm curious about mm -hmm. with this too is, well, first of all, I should say that if, if this is something that you want to play with uh, yourselves, um, we did just release our, our build tier pricing, which means there's a free tier. You can put a million records in there. Uh, you can get 10,000 searches with it. So that it's a great way to kind of, if you're, if you're trying to play with something like Gatsby and you want to make sure that, you know, is this the right fit? It, it helps out with that. But I was curious as you go into this configuration. So for someone who's coming off of doc search, were you at all able to sort of leverage any of the configuration that was in the existing doc search? Cause again, doc search is kind of opinionated. There is sort of an index configuration that mm -hmm. comes with that. Was any of that like useful to you kind of coming over to this or did you just kind of want to start from scratch and sort of build it the right way? I, I sort of started from scratch because mm -hmm. actually we had done, we probably, we, we had probably, we had done very little configuration with doc mm -hmm. search. Um, we, we had actually kind of just, sort of like I said set it up and sort of forgotten it. it yeah um it wasn't yeah it wasn't even clear exactly for me like I was asking around like who even had set it up originally it, it, you know and so I think for us it was like it was unclear a little bit where the configuration was got it um and the yeah the other thing too was like it kind of felt good to like start from scratch as well um there was sort of a process of like figuring out what to send to Algolia mm -hmm. like you know, this is all set up and 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 fine, but there was definitely a process at the start of like, what stuff should I send to Algolia? Like, you know, what mm. what sort of thing should I grab from the the each page? Um, this is kind of what I settled on and what worked well, but um, I'm sure there's a number of other things for kind of more complex content and more sort of like if you have other tags and whatnot, which. Um, is one thing I'll kind of talk about in a second. I'm sure there's more you can do here. So this was like, I guess I was surprised by how well it worked with just mm -hmm. like setting up something basic like this, like just like, okay, title and the raw body of each page. And it worked really well. Awesome. Um, cool. Yeah. So, so, so that was sort of like the main search The the other thing, um, that I think, um, is sort of unique. And what I mentioned before around like limitations of doc search was like, we had so many different types of content mm -hmm. that it made it hard to kind of have everything in one place. So that was when I discovered this other sort of area, once again, just kind of by playing around um, these things called facets, which once again, I'm sure you can chat more about, but basically from my understanding, they let you kind of group a number of records together. So for example, I want to group all the API docs together, all the kind of documentation pages together, um, and 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 I can break them up during search. So I can only search for API pages. I can only search for docs pages, or I can search for all of them. Yeah, yeah. And th so this is sort of as you're once you get all of your content into an Algolia index, this configuration. As you can see, there's a nice UI here. There's also you can also send it all as JSON uh, via an API yeah. if you get it the way you want it. But there are some key decisions you need to make around like, which of the data do I want to be searchable, right? Which is there more for just display purposes, right? Maybe I don't necessarily search on the date that an article was created, but I want yep. to be able to sort on it. And then the fa the faceting is what allows you to really go in and do like interesting filtering against it. So like, you know, like Paul's saying around a category of content, or you can build sliders around like, oh, I actually only want articles in the last month right? Or yep. things like that. That's really where the filtering and the faceting start to come in and sort of show the true power of having this in an index instead of just, you know, a database or something like that. So. Totally. Yeah. So, so, so what I ended up setting up on both post hog and here is basically breaking down by this sort of type. Mm -hmm. And in this example, I've, there's just sort of two types, basically there's kind of these just documentation pages and then these pages, which are more like API endpoint docs. So mm -hmm. the goal is to build sort of a search that has split up just normal pages and then normal kind of, or and then kind of API routes. Um, so yeah, once I set up kind of this faceting and then I think added it here as well, basically like added it into the facet display, then basically everything was kind of all set on the Algolia side. I know there's a bunch of other like stuff you can do here, mm -hmm. But um, really, that was all kind of I needed to set up to get things sort of going. Um, and so, yeah, I think now that we sort of have the index set up, it's probably a good time now to like jump into actually building this sort of search and doing a little bit more kind of front end stuff around like how do you create 
uh, really, if you want to go fully custom, how do you create something like that? Yeah, yeah, we can definitely. Let's start digging into the front end. One other question totally. I do have for you, though, on the back mm -hmm. before we jump off of this is, um, so the big difference here, right, is when you're using DocSearch, DocSearch comes with a crawler. So it's hitting yep. the front end. It's actually extracting this data directly out of the HTML that's being served on the client side. Now, obviously, building moving to the build process, you're extracting that data from the, the markdown, from the back end, the raw documents that, that generate the site. Were there any issues around URLs or linking or anything like that that came from that? Or was it all pretty straightforward because it was all relative? There was, there was definitely some sort of trial and error, I would say, mm -hmm. not necessarily issues. Like one, one thing that um, I sort of played around with at first is at first, actually, instead of sending pages, I was sending each record was like a section mm. within a, a, you know, a markdown page. Um, but I actually found that to be like almost a little too granular. Mm -hmm. So there was sort of a good amount of playing around with like, okay, let me try, you know, yeah, sending things as like, once again, I think the, the trade off is like, there's a little bit more thinking involved around like, how am I going to strategize here and like break things up? So at first it was like, we're going to break things up by section, but that was a little too granular. So then we broke it up by pages. Um, so that was really, it was more of a tri trial and error process, I think, than like any sort of huge issues we ran into. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense too, right? Because, you know, the, there's this sort of balancing act between like, if you have long pages, the cool thing yep. is if you, if you take each chunk and make it an individual record, you can drop the end user directly into the section yep. using an anchor tag, but then you get a lot more results and maybe it could be a little bit repetitive or something, depending on how you have your fastening and everything else set up. So, you know, it's, it's that matter of like making sure that like, you're not overwhelming them with records, but you're also giving them good context and dropping them where they need to be. Yeah, exactly. Um, so yeah, for us, like in the amount of kind of stuff we were looking through, it made sense to go a little bit, like I said, one of the early issues was Doc search was a little too granular. Mm -hmm. So for us going just by page made a lot of sense. Um, cool. All right. So let's now jump into some real code. Mm -hmm. um, so here we have sort of just like, I've kind of stubbed out this search box up here, basically. Um, and so right now it is this main search component here. We just have like a button. And then we have this search dialog box, which as of right now does nothing. So uh, we need to build that. So to, to, to get started um, for the front end on uh, our search, I use this library called Headless UI, which I really, really love. It's made by the creators of Tailwind. Um, and it's a great sort of like, I, I think the way it's described is it's like un, unopinionated as far as styling goes react components so they provide sort of the functionality but they don't provide the styling like some other front-end libraries so um to start we'll bring in like this dialog component which is basically like a sort of like a a, a, a pop-up pretty much mm -hmm. like a, a pop-up modal um and so in here we will um this button right here instead of a button. Actually, we're going to wrap this whole thing in uh, dialogue, which is sort of like this kind of wrapper around both your button to open the thing and the, the thing as a whole. Um, and we need to give it our properties here. And then it wants on close. So cool. Okay, so now we've wrapped our sort of thing here. And actually, I'm going to display this as, as a div. So we actually get the styling, hopefully. If not, what I'll do is I'll just, here, I'll we'll just put this in here. <laughs> just wrap it. It's a little bit, <laughs> exactly. So, because um, the wrapper itself actually doesn't, do anything really other than kind of provide logic so we can yeah. put anything inside of that we want and i think it's complaining here that we are closing and still not showing up for whatever reason but actually here let's replace so then instead of this button what we're going to do is we're going to have 
uh, dialogue.button, okay. which is basically like each, I kind of like the way that they do it, but they export like these sort of sub components. So for a dialogue box, there's the button and then there's kind of the panel. Mm -hmm. um, and actually, let me see if it's not complaining about anything. Okay, um, is that not showing up? Let's see. Da, da, da. Should be. Oh, uh, here. Let's see if we remove this. Did it show back up? I'm just gonna complain about this. Okay, there it showed back up. Um, yeah, let's see. Let me try wrapping it one more time. Dialog. Open. Oh, and that just disappears. <laughs> so weird. Um, do we need to? Do you need to have it default open to start or? Well, the button should still oh, show yeah, up, point. which is the strange part. Yeah. Um, Do you want here, to take the, the classes off it for a second and see if the, the default one works? Yeah, let's see. I've never had this issue before, so apologies. Um, yeah, it's the live coding. Uh, of that, that's course. the joy here. of it, right? Exactly. Here, let We've me. My I machine. Have, <laughs> I, I have a I have a sample over here. Let me just check okay, cool. real quick that I'm doing everything correct. And I, I gotta say um, that I, I love that you're using um, these libraries. Um, so we at Agolia, we've got a couple of front end libraries that we we ship, like open source libraries for like instant search and autocomplete experiences. And frankly, I've I've gotten a little spoiled. I kind of just use those, you know, or maybe lazy is the right word, right? I kind of use those every time. So it's kind of fun to kind of get out of that space and kind of see what's going on over here in the in the tailwind space. Um, I'm excited to see. But yeah, and so it's essentially it's kind of a, a equivalent, like if you use the autocomplete or the instant search, uh, those libraries give you a set of widgets for things like search boxes and result yep. sets and refinements and things like that. Um but you know the nice thing about this is by using, I assume by using everything kind of within this tailwind space, it's all kind of designed to have a similar look and feel and kind of work together nicely. Yeah, and you can do much more sort of custom custom logic with it mm -hmm. as far as like um, you know doing really kind of custom UX and UI. Right. Um, I'm 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 super confused why this is not showing up. Huh. Um, here, let me see. Let me just. We're just gonna go and and start from scratch here, and just yeah, that's do cool. when in doubt, just kind of <laughs> start with the simplest. How exactly many times, right? You know, get a console log and a hello world in there just to see if we're in the right exactly. spot. Exactly. <laughs> here, just to be safe, I'm gonna go to headless UI and I'm gonna copy the sample verbatim. Oh, cool. Okay. So sounds good. If this doesn't work, then and and why Paul's bringing this in? If you have any questions. Uh, again, there is a Q&A section um, in Zoom here, and I'd be glad to answer any questions around what Paul's coding, around Doc Search itself, you know, around um, the integrations. I know we're talking about we we're talking about the Gatsby integration. Um, I'd love to know like what your backend is, what you're using. Um, oh man, I should dig it up. But for the WordPress folks out there, there was uh, there's a a community member, a, a company actually that is kind of sponsored building sort of a full-fledged WordPress to Algolia integration, which is really interesting. I'll see if I can dig that up and drop it in the chat. If not, I'll put it on Twitter later. At Chuck, at Chuck is me. All right. I restarted the build. So let's see. Fingers crossed here. All right. I'm going to do a little drum roll. Make it even even worse when it doesn't appear. Oh. <laughs> um, here. So what I can do is I have this working over here. Mm -hmm. So what I'll do is actually, wait, wait, let me try one more thing. Um, it's the it's the simplest things that don't work though. Like oh, just yeah. bringing in a, bringing in a default dialog box. Yeah, it's like, um, it's like I just want to get through this so I can get to the cool stuff. Exactly, exactly yeah. right. This is like the most boring thing. 
So, um, worst case, if it's not popping up, is there a place where we can maybe jump into? Yeah, yeah, I can. Well, like I said, I can. Um, uh, I can also just go through and grab the 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 code I have that's working. Or the other thing I can do is I can show it in the in the posthog.com website. Um, so if that is the case, I can do that. But oh, I'm 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 so confused as why it is not working. Mm. Um, here again, it's Let the demo see. effect. Exactly. Uh, so we've got we got me... uh, in chat. Uh, Shavon is saying on line forty one, should the default value be true? Would that help? Um, I is that the... think we can see. That's the setup. Although there, right? it should. Okay, here we'll 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 we'll, we'll cheat. Here we go. So um, let's see here. Let me let me let me get back to. So what we'll do is what we'll do is there is a dialog dot button, but what we'll do is we'll just have a button outside of this because for whatever reason it doesn't want to it doesn't want to show what's in the oh, dialog. Better. So what we'll do yeah. is we'll do this, <laughs> and we'll have the we'll have the button be outside of it, and then it shows up. Yeah. So now. Julie's saying this is our proof that it's live. <laughs> exactly. Okay. So yeah, now we so have we something showing up. Yeah. Okay. Okay, cool. And and there and there is actually something showing up, even though it's even though it's some uh it's it doesn't look like anything much right now. Okay. Whew. Um I promise this library in general is works amazing. <laughs> so yeah, we're, take my we're word big for it. Tailwind fans uh here at Uncle. Yeah. So if you go to the Tailwind website, uh, the first thing you'll see is a, a little demo with uh, Sarah Dayon, who's one of our our new she actually is our new principal engineer now. So so we love Tailwind. Cool. Okay, so now what we will do is we'll try and style our panel a little bit. Um it should be showing up now. Set open to true and then dialogue panel. And so should be seeing our actually what do we need to do. Fixed. There we go. Okay. So now we have All our right. panel. It looks it looks terrible, but we'll we'll fix that in a second. Sure. So we'll just bring it to the front here. And okay. Now we have our panel. Let's instead of with full, let's do like um I don't know, we'll make it a little smaller and then we'll do there, we'll center it. Um and so now we have as you can see, it does nice stuff. Once again, the headless part where if I click outside of it, mm -hmm. it closes it. So it sort of does some of that for you. Oh, that's cool. So now we have our sort of panel to get a start with. Um Let's see if I can bring back in. Well, I'm I'm not going to jinx this. I'm just going to leave this. I'm going to leave this unstyled button, even though That's... we had a nice search box before. But I'm um, always uh, polish it later, right? Exactly, exactly. So now we have our our sort of modal, which is kind of the first step, right? Of like, open this modal um, when we kind of click the search box. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to limit the height a little bit so that it's not. And then actually, I'll just stick this in a div so that we can have this be uh, this can be just to make it easy. We'll just center this. Center. And for folks that um, would be doing the equivalent in the Algolia autocomplete library, this this kind of mimics what we do with detached mode. So if you set detached mode equals true, you get that same experience where you click on the button and it pops up this sort of modal box like this. Cool. So, all right. Now we have our box. Um, and next step is, okay, we have this box that opens and we now want it to not deactivate um, the account that's for sure <laughs> <laughs> exactly yeah um we yeah we now want it to not be deactivate account we now want it to actually be our search input mm. so to start um and and we built our once again like chuck said um you know algolia provides kind of a lot of components for us like we we wanted to sort of break out as much as possible 
Um, and so for our kind of search and results, I is, I'm using this component from Headless UI, which is the combo box. Oh, we so it's um, basically like if you look on the, the sample, it's basically a drop down. The basic styling they have is a drop down where you can type things in and you get results. So for us, that's kind of the base functionality that we need. Um, so we're going to use this combo box, um, wrap our whole thing in this. And I think this needs to be imported here. And then it probably will want some other stuff. But um, what we can do is, here, I'm just checking my, okay, cool. So we have this combo box now. And one of the things it provides us is this combo box that input, which is basically our, our, our input you know, field, our text field. Um, and we'll just add like a, a, a thing here to store this. So this is our, our search input basically. Um, and we should see, this should refresh in a second. Cool, okay, so now we have our search input. It's doing nice. something funky with the, um, uh, the ah, I see. We need not set query, we need set query to event target value. Cool. So now we should have our, and I'm going to default this to, to open by default, just so we make it easy. Now we have our search box, our input at least, right? Mm -hmm. um, and we're storing this in kind of our, our, our query variable right here. Nice. Um, so next, this is when we sort of now bring in some of the Algolia hooks of like, okay, I have this search box, I have this text input. Um, we have full freedom to customize the styling of those, but we don't really want to build like the actual logic of search as far as like all the things that, you know, Algolia provides. So we're going to use this, um, what's it called? Uh, instant search um, hooks. So I'm going to bring that in. Yep. So we're in React land and we just recently, this, well, recently, it was within the last, wow, maybe six months, um, we've switched over our instant search libraries to fully embrace React hooks. So everything can be configured. Everything has a hook on the back end, which is what Paul's going to be jumping into right here. Um, yep. I also, just as a tangent, I posted a link in the chat uh, to Headless UI. And I noticed they don't have a search for their widgets. Now they're not a lot of widgets yet, but I know you're right. Headless though. UI, if you need some search, maybe we can <laughs> uh, maybe we can do a live coding session later and add search to headless UI. <laughs> cool. Okay, so we've imported in now our our um, instant search webhooks. So mm -hmm. to set this up, we basically need to wrap our component in sort of like a an instant search provider that deals with basically exposing hooks that you can use and um, anywhere throughout the search, you'll get the same results. So what we'll do is we'll create a client up at the top, which I've already set up um, some environment variables for our app ID. And then let's see, I called this search API key. Mm -hmm. So this is like our Algolia search, basically I'm a, a client and I need to import this as well. Yeah. So in the this advantage of using process. instant search for sort of that layer between the Algolia APIs and your front end is um, it has all of like the retry logic and the fallback and they're fully supported within our SLAs. So for production use cases, you're going to want to use something like that as the intermediate layer. Exactly. Yeah, this is, um, oops, I was putting the shadow on our book here. This will make it easier to see. Um, um, okay, yeah, here's our, here's our modal again. So cool. So we've created our search client and we have our kind of instant search um, uh, wrapper. So now we need to go and basically wrap our entire search component here in instant search, which will expose all these hooks to, you know, everything throughout there. So we'll just mm -hmm. add instant search. Um, and then our search client is oops, there, search client. And then I believe we also need to pass in, yes, our index name, I'm not sure what these auto, auto completes are. 
Um, so I have another environment variable with our um, our index name mm -hmm. um, that I set up. So there is our wrapper, basically around our component. So we have instant search with that client that we set up up at the top um, up here, and then we're wrapping that around everything. So now what we can do is um, actually, I'll need to do this in a separate component so that it's, it's um, accessible, but we'll just make this search box component and we'll put all of this in here. Uh, moving some stuff around. Cool. Okay, so now we have this search box component here, which is basically our our, our pop up. And the way the reason I did this was so that it's within this instant search provider. Um, and let's see, let's go ahead and something. Okay, cool. So now we have this box in here, and what we want to do is we're going to use this. Um, use this use search let me just find it real quick over in here or use search box so there's this use search box hook use oops, and it has a refine method on it which is our um basically our way of every time the user changes their input we're going to refine the search results um and i need to import this i believe from instant search hooks use search box perfect okay cool so now we have our use search box and we have our refine method so what we want to do is basically every time someone um, updates a query we'll just go here we'll just use an effect and so every time the query gets updated we're going to call refine which will refine our search results so now as we're typing we're doing searches in Algolia, but once again, we're not actually pulling in any results yet. Mm -hmm. So to get results, what we're gonna do is we're going to use the use hits hook, I believe. So now this is another was, hook. If, if I was looking at my developer tools, you'd see those API calls going out and the response is coming back, right? We're just not surfacing yes. those results to the front end yet. Yeah, I just haven't, um, uh, I just haven't actually like provided any, what's it called? I haven't actually provided any, displaying of the results right, yet. Exactly. It should, okay. should be in there. So so we'll do that right now. Um, and the nice thing is, is like, there's some kind of boilerplate you need to set up. Mm -hmm. But the nice thing is, is now that we have this like instant search provider, basically, any hook we want to add, we can just put in instantly and, and, and it just sort of works. So now we have our, you know, use hits, which basically gives us a list of sort of our results um and so i let's see if it'll give me so if if we have hits hits.length is 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 greater than zero what we'll do is we'll for now i'm just going to display this it's dot map with and then um here what we'll do is for now we'll just um we'll just print out like the raw result just some so, just some json right there on the page exactly right love and it. and maybe we'll just ship it with that <laughs> <laughs> um but uh okay let's get these brackets all set and then it's complaining about how to see cool okay so now hopefully if we reload the page and oh Let's see, your application ID may be incorrect. I probably typed a environment variable wrong. Yes, okay. this is not next public. I'm gonna blame Copilot. Uh this is Gatsby. <laughs> oh yeah, we're not we're not running a next. Well, we're not running on next. <laughs> All right. Cool. And I think I might have one more. The index. That here, let's just reload it fully. And actually, I'm gonna restart the build. Okay. Did you grab that the, the index variable too? Yeah, this one. This one's correct. This one's oh, cool. Gatsby. Okay, got it. Yeah, yeah. Name. My bad. That was under the QA box here. Which, by the way, yep. if, um, I get, we've got a question from Corey. Corey, I'm saving yours. Uh, just we're gonna let Paul finish up his flow here, and then we'll we'll dig into to next steps. 
Uh, but if you have any questions for Paul or myself, feel free to ask them in the QA section or uh, preferably in the QA section, honestly. Here, what I'll do is I'm just going to, for ease of use, I'm just going to grab this for whatever reason, the environment and variable is complaining. So I'm just going to grab mm. this is, this is, these are, these are like public strings. So right. these aren't, you know, like your actual keys or anything, but yeah. it's okay to have these be public. Here, we'll just go. Okay. Yeah. So for folks, I've, I'm sure folks are there we go. familiar with there. Look at that. Look at that. Folks so are such nice results Apple here, but just, just to kind of reiterate that, like that's a search only API key. It's going to go in the client anyway. It's nice for you to have it in an environment variable, but yep. it's not going to, it's not a security risk to surface it like that. Anyway, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to interrupt. No, 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 no worries. Yeah. It, it, it's good to mention that. I think. Um, cool. Okay. So now we have our, our, our list of hits. Um, I'm going to display this in a little bit of a nicer format. Um, nice so, the JSON. What could be nice than the JSON? Right. This is such a, such easy to read, uh, easy to read results. Um, so I'm just going to do it a little bit nicer. Um, just going to maybe just do like the, so what we'll do is we'll do the, um, title, I believe is property we have on there. Mm -hmm also have the the type of the result so whether it's like a docs page or an api page um and then i believe i also have the excerpt on there as well so let's see if that um works cool and i'm just going to add a little bit of styling here a um, little bit of sort of stuff. and then we'll just do here we'll do overflow it should give us, yeah, there we go. Okay, cool. So now our results will actually scroll. Um, but yeah, so here are our results, right? It's it's mm -hmm. it's that simple to kind of get results from Algolia. If we start searching like attachments, you'll see attachments is first. You know, if we search pagination, pagination comes up. Um, and so really like from a basic search interface, that's, the that's the kind of gist that's all you really need mm -hmm. um i'll well, show and, real quick and you can see the commingled build... you can see the commingled types too which is neat too like i see the first one's yes. from your api docs the second one's from the page so you're getting all of that information uh obviously we don't have the buttons yet to kind of drill down into a particular one but i'm sure that would be what you would do next now we, we are kind of coming up on time a little yep. bit do you want to do a little bit more coding or do we want to jump into maybe the the the, the end result yeah, the only thing I was going to say was mm -hmm. that last part that you mentioned. I I, yeah. I I don't think I have time to build it, but to do that, once again, another hook, this hook called use um, refinement list, which basically allows you to kind of filter down these results. Um, and so I'll just grab this snippet real quick. I won't build the front end for it, but in here we have basically another refine method um, where this is exactly what we want, where basically we can refine and I call this um, fine list. So basically we can refine down by one of those things we added in the, the index earlier around the type of a record. So whether it's an API or a page. Um, and so you could add this in styling wise as like just a selector of like, here are all the types you have and whatnot. But um, once again, once you kind of have these hooks set up, it's easy to add this part in afterwards and you kind of have then the flexibility of building this and styling this however you would like to. So very cool. Yeah, that, that was the only other thing I wanted to mention. Yeah. So we've got the gaps, we got the Gatsby backend that's um, going yeah. ahead and pulling all of that information at during the build process. We've got our React front end. You're using the hooks from instant search to sort of um, take care of the the underlying machinations of interacting yep. with the API. But you're using this uh, headless UI for the front end, and the kind of yep. all of that kind of stitches together nicely. Let's jump back to the the final results just to kind of see it now that we Absolutely. understand how it all fits together. Yeah, and once again, this is this is obviously not as pretty as what it ended up turning out to be. Right. Um, but you can still kind of see the 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 the, the bones there, yeah. right? Of like you know, and 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 the other thing too I'll mention is our whole website is open source. So at some point I'll link to, if you want to look through the full code for this search box here, um, it has a lot of the same bones, but it's all out there for you to see. 
Um, so as you can see, same sort of input combo box, same results. We're doing a little bit more fancy stuff with like showing, for example, headings on the page of like, here's the kind of excerpt. And then we have all these headings there, but really it's the same exact bones un underneath it. Cool. And that reminded me, I'm going to put it, I just dropped a link in the chat to, um, you said that there's, the, that's the repo that will have the demo code in it after the, the, the stream. So it's not yes. there right now, but, but I'm giving the link now so you can bookmark it and take a look later. Um, and we've got, so we can see the, the buttons at the bottom. Those are uh, linked into those uh, refinement filters that you were just talking about. And I like that yep. you've got the number of records per is displayed there. Yeah. Um, and once again, that's something that just comes, it, it sort of just gives you that for free. It's really a question of how you want to display all this information that it right. gives you. Now, now, so Corey asked a question a while back, and this seems like the appropriate time to ask, which is, what's next so we've got like this cool mm -hmm. sort of like um this detached modal we've got all of this kind of good information in here like the first thing i would think of um as as an ogolea user would be it'd be kind of cool to get some like highlighting right of yep. like what piece was kind of searched would that is that kind of on your radar absolutely yeah that was that was one thing and i know we talked about this before i think that's one thing that is still sort of like UX wise kind of lacking from here. Um, you know, the, the results are much better and easier to parse, but I think it still would be nice to have, for example, um, the way we have search set up, it's searching the entire page of text. Hmm. And so it would be nice probably to add like a, and, and I think I can't remember the exact name of it. Um, the, the, you know, API or whatever that Algolia provides this information from, but they yeah. can provide you basically the context of where a result comes from. Yeah, you can um, have it flagged so, I, so that in the results set, you get like sort of that snippet and that 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 yep. ability to sort of highlight the the exact place where the word shows up. Yeah, exactly. Um, you know, I think like there's definitely um, definitely some stuff to do around there as far as like UX and and stuff like that. Um, I think that there's also um, a lot of stuff we'd want to do around, for example, tracking results or sorry, tracking kind of metrics around searching. So like when someone searches for something, um, Algolia has all these sort of things around sending, for example, if someone searched for something and no results showed up or re-ranking things, Algolia has stuff for doing this. And so right now, we're collecting all of this data, but not really doing too much as far as actually adjusting the results or, you know, changing kind of the ranking and stuff based on yeah. this. So I think that's another thing that would be really interesting for us going forward. Yeah. And I think, I mean, that's a whole other conversation that you and I could have, because yep. that's definitely a place where Algolia and PostHog sort of overlap is, you know, what Paul's talking about is as he was going through that configuration, there's a bunch of sort of advanced features around dynamic re-ranking and recommendations and um, synonyms and things like that, that essentially we can use telemetry data as users are sort of searching for things, clicking on things. Uh, we could take that information and use it to refine the results and improve them over time, which I think <laughs> aligns really well with what PostHog does, right? Yep. Um, yeah, and so even like just just as a little sort of sample, I can show, um, for example, here's like a, a an insight. So so we are kind of tracking stuff from search in PostHog. So this is the product here, and and it's you know sort of classic like product analytics. But like for example, tracking on what pages are people opening the search the most, and you can see by far and away our kind of community questions page is where people are engaging with this the most, which is like very interesting information to see, um, you know, basically people trying to search through all of these community questions we have. So yeah, um, I, I think shipping that data to Algolia would be a really interesting next step. Yeah. And ironically that, that well, not ironically, I mean, it, it sort of uh, makes sense. Uh, the API that we have for sending that information is our insights API. So it makes sense yep. to send your insights <laughs> to our insights API. And yeah, we definitely, I'd love to have a conversation about that at a later date, um, but we are starting to come up on time here. Um, so if you have one last question, uh, feel free to ask. Um, otherwise I'm just gonna, while, while you're typing, thank Paul for joining me today. I think this was really interesting. I love everything that you showed. I love that 
journey from going from doc searches crawling to Gatsby mm -hmm. and getting a little bit more control over the data and being able to make a little bit more informed decisions about how you ingest that, how you split it up, and then building this front end and, and seeing like headless UI and kind of shaking myself out of that like autocomplete instant search world <laughs> and seeing kind of another way to build a front end. Um, I still think they need a search on their site though. Yes, they definitely do. They do. And yeah, like I said, it, I, I think if, if you don't need this, like, you know, we're very particular about a things, a lot of things, if you don't need insane customization, this is probably overkill for you doing the full sort mm -hmm. of custom build, but it's nice that Algolia lets you break out. I think that's the thing that's really nice is if you want to, you can break out whenever you need to. Right. Also shout out for adding control K. Uh, so that you got your hot yes. key because I see yes. you're a Vim user and I'm a I'm a Vim user myself and I love hot keys. Uh, I yes. love some hot keys. So that's awesome to see <laughs> that in there. I think it's a great UI. I think it's a really cool pattern um, with the preview pane on the right hand side. Um, I, I love this pattern. I used it for um, an audio visual search that we did for DevCon videos. Um, but it's really cool to see it with this kind of like uh, just just the fit and finish that Tailwind brings to the table is great. Mm -hmm. so. Cool. Um, cool. Yeah. Well, I'm going to leave it there. Um, I want to thank you all for joining us today. Um, this will be on YouTube later, so you can find it on our live coding session channel. Uh, shout out to Julie on our side, who always helps us put these things together. It's fantastic. And uh, join us again next month where we'll have another guest and another uh, great topic. So thank you all. Thanks, Paul. Thank you. Have a good one.